Are you a cloud architect who desires to learn Linux? Are you a cloud engineer who desires to learn Linux? Or are you just a technology professional who knows that Linux is important for your career? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs and I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Architects and we're an organization dedicated towards building high performance cloud computing and networking careers. I've been working in technology for over 25 years and I've been helping others get their first tech job or get promoted in tech for two decades and it's something I absolutely love to do. Now this is a continuation of our series on Linux for cloud architects. C Linux in today's world is an extremely common operating system. In fact, 90% of all systems on the cloud run Linux, most servers run Linux, and most technology embedded devices also run Linux. So Linux is absolutely important for your career. Now, if you're a cloud architect or a cloud engineer or a network engineer or a network architect, Linux is everywhere. And while we're not gonna be Linux systems administrators, knowing how to navigate Linux is gonna be absolutely critical for our career. So in this video, we're gonna give you the top 20 Linux commands that are gonna help you learn how to navigate Linux and get the most out of Linux. Now we're gonna walk through 20 very common, highly useful Linux commands. The first command we're gonna walk through is the ls command. And you can see that ls is just gonna list the contents of the directory that we're in. Now we can add some additional attributes such as an ls minus la or al, which is gonna list everything that's there along with the permissions. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just use the command echo, which is really just gonna print something on the screen. So we're just gonna give you a basic example. And here you go, we did an echo, hi go cloud architects, and you can see that it printed on the screen, go cloud architects. Now in this case, we actually wanna create a file called go cloud architects. So we're gonna use the touch command and we're gonna to touch go cloud architects. And what you'll see is it's gonna create a file called go cloud architects. Now it's gonna be an empty file, but you still can see that it's listed there as go cloud architects. Now, when we're dealing with files, one of the ways to organize things is with a directory. So we're gonna make a directory with the make directory command. And you can see how that's gonna work. And you can see we've made a directory. Okay. The next command that we're gonna talk about is grep. Grep enables you to search for a string or use a regular expression. We'll give you an example. We're gonna grep right now for something. And you can see, realistically speaking, we found out the exact version of the release of CentOS that we're using by grepping for that. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use the man pages or the manual pages. So we're gonna use the man command and we're actually gonna get a manual and show you how it actually works. We've done the man command or the manual command for the grep command and now you can see that we're walking through the manual. We've got a great set of instructions and it's built right in. So we'll exit out of this and we'll clear the screen. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually print the working directory so we can find out exactly where we're located in the file system with a pwd command. And as you can see, you can see where we're located um, through that command. Now at this point, we're gonna change the directory. Perhaps we're gonna change directory to go to that slash root or that slash command. So we're gonna just do a cd slash and you can see where that's taken us. Um, we can do an ls and you'll see the files and file systems and folders that are actually listed there. Now at this point, we're gonna go back to our home directory and inside of our home directory, we're gonna take one file and we're gonna move it somewhere else with the MV command. And so we're gonna move the file go cloud architects. Um, we're gonna make a new directory and we're gonna give it a new name. And you can see that the, the go cloud architects was copied to this new directory that we just created. Now at this point, we're gonna look at the beginning of a file with the head command. So we're gonna use the head to print the beginning of a file. I'll show you what that looks like. As you can see, that's what we've done. Now, let's say we wanted to search for a file inside of our operating system. Now we can use grep to search within a file, but now we wanna search for something. So we're gonna use the find command. And of course we're using super user permissions so we can search for things that are outside of our local directory in case we need super user permissions. Obviously we're entering our super user password and then you can see um, what's going on there. 
Now at this point, if we want to look into a file, we have an opportunity to use the more or less command. In this case, we're going to use the less command. We're going to look inside of a file. You can see we're actually able to see various components of a file with the less command. Now in that same line of thinking, we're going to use the cat command to actually look inside of a file. As you can see, the cat command does something very similar for us and we can look inside of a file. Now, we looked at the head of the file with the head command. We actually used the more or less command to actually look in a file. So now we're going to use the tail to look at the end of the file. Okay, now you've seen how that. Now, as you know, in Linux and Unix systems, we have permissions, permissions that could be read, read, write, or execute. And we can use the chmod command to actually optimize permissions. So we're going to give you an example. We're going to use the chmod command, and we're going to change the permissions for a file. There you go. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to look through the history. And we're going to type history to see what was in our history. And you can see these are the commands that we've typed. Now, let's say, for example, we wanted to pull a file or a series of files from a website. We have that concept of the curl command. Here, as you can see, what we're doing is we're going to be pulling down some files with the curl command. And as you can see how that worked. Now, let's say we've taken a, some files that we've pulled down, and we want to copy them and put them somewhere else we can use the cp or the copy command for that. As you can see, we've copied a file and everything worked. Now, let's say we had a process and we wanted to kill it. Well, we're going to identify a process by running an extra command called the top command, and that's going to show us some processes that are actually running. And OK, you can see the processes, and you can also see they're identified by a process identification number. Now, let's say, for example, we had a process that went haywire. All we would have to do is we could basically just do a kill and then the process number. So what we're going to do here is we're going to find a process number. What we'll do is we'll exit out of this. We'll do a kill to the process. And you can see how basically we can take a process that's running and just basically stop it on demand without actually terminating the entire system. So we're going to identify a process by a process ID, and now we're going to go kill it. As you can see, we killed the process. And if we run top again, you'll see it's not going to be running. Unless it got restarted, of course, which sometimes does happen. But as you can see, it's no longer running. Now, we'll exit out of this, and we'll give you one bonus command, and it is the exit command, which is how you're going to exit out of your SSH session. There you go. 20, well, actually with a bonus, 21 simple Linux Unix commands to help you navigate the Unix and Linux systems. I hope you've enjoyed this video on Linux for cloud engineers and Linux for cloud architects. Linux is very important, and we will have many new Linux videos coming for you in the coming weeks and months. It was so nice having you join us for this video today. Let me tell you about some free services we do for the cloud community. Twice per week, we have a free how to get your first cloud architect job webinar, where we tell you all the things you need to do and know to get your first cloud architect job. In addition to that, once per week, we actually have a free question and answer session on live on YouTube, where you can come and ask us any questions you want about building your career, related to cloud computing or networking, and we'll answer them in real time for you because we want to get you to your goals. Several more times per week, we have guests from industry, industry experts that I have known for decades that are movers and shakers that have changed the world that can give you information so you can build the best career. I invite them periodically. They are on my show. If there's a chance to do some free training on our channel, we'll do it live because we want you to all to have the best skills for the best career. So please subscribe and hit the bell. I look forward to seeing you, and I look forward to assisting you in your technology career. Thank you so much. This is Michael Gibbs from GoCloud Architect.